Hello and welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to be giving you a full tour of the backyard food forest here in the spring. This is year nine of this garden design and we've got a nice beautiful day. Good day to show you guys around. We're going to start right here towards the beginning of the food forest. We've got a parsimon there, a fuyu, and you can see the compost trommel there and a couple piles that we've been sifting making garden soil. We've got some patches of green here in bloom mixed in with some goji berry. Some of these are volunteer plants and some of them that I started from plant starts, cuttings. As we move along over here, I've got a couple new additions. I've got an American persimmon tree there and I've actually got another one right over here. And this first garden bed here is an annual bed. We've got eggplants, tomatoes, peppers, uh, squash, zucchini, and then in between we've got a bunch of little beets starting to pop up. Moving right along. Over here we got just kind of a untamed area of the yard. A lot of different perennial greens that have self-seeded and some exciting new varieties. We recently featured this plant here with these large leaves. We harvested most of the largest leaves just the other day, but it's putting on some new growth now. Really nice plants developing here in the backyard food forest. Here's another new addition, an all-in-one almond tree. We've got another one in the main area of the food forest towards the back of the yard. And we've also been plugging in some new plants like here we've got a dragon fruit. We've got a few different dragon fruit that we plugged in. Eventually I'm going to have to make a trellis for those plants. And over here a bay tree used for the leaves and culinary. We're passing by a big cardoon plant here, cousin of the artichoke. You can see it's beginning to develop one of its flower heads. Quite beautiful plant and we use the leaves for chop and drop, which you'll see throughout the food forest. Like back over here, you can see we've dropped a lot of these artichoke and cardoon leaves. And right back here, we've got a Haas avocado tree. This tree was plugged in last year and it overwintered just fine. It's looking quite healthy, so we're excited to perhaps get some avocados in the future. We've given it a couple different tries and this is gonna be the third attempt actually with the avocado. The other two attempts were with the Mexicola variety and those didn't fare too well over winter even though they're supposed to be the most cold hardy but the Haas looks very good. We'll take a step back and look we've got two raised garden beds here and we like to mainly keep annual plants in these garden beds since they're close to the back of the house but these are hidden hugo cultures. We filled these beds using large logs, branches and different organic material that we took out from the garden that really reduced the amount of soil that we had to come up with to fill these beds up. Otherwise it could have gotten quite expensive. So highly rec recommend doing the hugo culture style raised bed. It'll save you a bunch of money and a great way to utilize those materials that you have right on site. And at the same time sequester carbon. By burying those organic materials under the ground, it keeps that carbon in the soil and can be good for the environment if we do it on a mass scale, especially. You see in this first hugel culture raised bed, we've got some potatoes that have really been taken off. All the potatoes growing in our garden were planted from store-bought potatoes that once they begin to sprout, we just bury them throughout the garden. So no seed potatoes, just supermarket potatoes, different varieties, all sorts of different potatoes. You can see here we've got some plant starts that are getting going. These are longevity spinach and they're just rooting out right now in these little pots. We're going to transplant those out to the garden soon. Here we've got a Tronchuda Portuguese kale. I'm allowing to flower and go to seed. Just an amazing variety of greens. We just recently featured this plant in its extremely large leaves. Quite delicious. And we've got some other varieties of the Tronchuda as well that have different characteristics as they've cross-pollinated with some of the other perennial greens in the garden. The bees are absolutely loving the flowers on these brassica oleraceas and they're helping us 
to create some exciting new varieties. Looking back at the back of this hugel culture, or raised bed garden, we've left this back space blank because we've got some hop nest tubers that are starting to send up some new shoots. Hop nest is an edible tuber that we planted a couple years ago and instead of harvesting we've just been allowing those tubers to overwinter proliferate we got a nice dense patch now this will vine up and I'll be putting a trellis up to catch those vines we had a really nice thick screen last year so that's exciting stuff over here I just recently planted some Egyptian spinach and covered it with a bit of row cover and the majority of this bed actually are all volunteer plants so turned out actually pretty nice we got some hollyhock some greens uh, there's some onions that have popped up that we actually did pop in there and the hopness of course but we'll be taking some of these plants out and replacing them with some other annual varieties right here we've got our nesting boxes for our chicken coop. This is an old bowling alley locker that I converted over and each one of these doors flips up and there's a bucket inside and most of them actually, I don't know why that one doesn't, but most of them have a little area in the back of the bucket where I can reach in and harvest an egg without having to actually go inside of the coop so that's convenient. So I put buckets in each one of these little cubbies so that it was easy to clean. I can just take the bucket out, wash that out really well and reset the system. The chickens really like it. Here we've got goji berries just going off and if you look closely it's hard to see from a distance. We've got a lot of berry production happening here. Those little green starts there. We've got the blooms. This is quite exciting. Towards the beginning of this year I pruned back these gojis tremendously. I took a bunch of the wood off and I didn't know quite what to expect, but they've flushed out new growth and are really taking off. Here we're in the chicken run. And one thing you're going to see different this year, or at least in this video, not this year, we do this every year, is the amount of chop and drop on the floor of the food forest design. So recently I came through and did a whole bunch of removal of some of the jungle growth I like to call it, some of the over density and we just dropped that right onto the ground just to help build the soil keep the moisture in the ground. It also opened things up quite a bit so now you can see individual plants and I can share with you what those are. Here we've got a Pakistan mulberry right behind a little banana stand there. We've got some more artichokes. There are some ornamental plants, some calla lily back there if you can see it. And right here we've got a fajoa or a pineapple guava. And we've got a lot of blooms starting to develop. We've got two of these in the food forest. This one being in the chicken run was planted here intentionally because it's an evergreen and this is gonna allow some shade for the chickens in the heat of the summer also some protection it'll help to camouflage them from some of the predators we have like the chicken hawks in the area and one of the best parts is that this tree will drop its fruit when they're perfectly ripe and create some food sources for the chicken as well and perhaps as this tree gets much larger if the limbs are strong enough they'll be able to roost in here which they love to do in the evenings they love roosting in trees over any other way of sleeping at night so Hopefully that all works out. I'll show you here is the chicken coop. There's still one hen laying on her eggs here. And we're just allowing her to stay in her zone. But we did get a nice harvest of eggs over the last couple weeks. And now some of the chickens are happy to start walking around again after laying on eggs for a while. Before we head over this way, you can see we've got the hugel cultures with the cattle panels going from both sides, which is going to give us a lot of growth.
vertical growing into the airspace. I'm going to bring you around this way and show you. I'm going to try to cover as many of these plants as I can. There's going to be a few that are going to get missed because there's just too much to really go over all in one video. It would take a long, long time, but we've got chives here, some daylily, lavender. Look at that beautiful bumblebee. Here we've got a mandarin tree, and this tree has had many different homes. It started off in a half a whiskey barrel, then it was planted in one area of the yard where it wasn't doing well, and this is the third transfer. And it's coming back. It actually bloomed, and it's still got some flowers on there, and it's looking pretty healthy. It's shooting out a lot of new growth, so we'll continue to update you on that. Behind there, we've got the willow. If you look back in here, you can see some ashitaba that's perennialized back over there. They're looking very healthy. They seem to thrive the best for us in part shade and next to the pond back there, perhaps a little microclimate for them, a little more humidity, a little more warmth in the cold of the night. There's a gomi berry there. See a lot more potatoes and the hidden hugo culture here. So as we enter into this area, we've got the fish pond. And the fish are quite happy. These are comet goldfish and they do just fine in our area overwintering. We get down below freezing. So they're a very hardy fish. Fun to watch. And this is one of our favorite hangout spots. We like to just chill out by the pond by the way, it's a little bit low right now. We got to do a flush to clear up the water as well. So I'll be pumping out some of this water and replacing it with some fresh water. Just a nice place to hang out. Here we've got some perennial evergreen flower shrubs. This is a great plant to have in the front yard or in the backyard. It's the Europs. Adds a nice splash of color. Here's a closer look at our compost sifting machine trommel made out of a Harbor Freight cement mixer and a waste receptacle. If you're interested in learning how I made that, uh, check the links below. I'll add a link to that. Here's another cardoon. Again, perennializing throughout the garden. Also sending out volunteers for us. There are a few plants like these shortcake, raspberry, and blueberry shrubs. They stay really close to the ground. We put in last year and they overwintered, coming back nice and strong. Can't wait to get some of those. And here we've got some artichokes and you can see all the globes developing here. Here's another cool plant. This is commonly found throughout our area in the mediums of the roadways and such because it's quite drought tolerant and wet tolerant, weather tolerant. This is the Society Garlic. The leaves are edible and have a garlicky onion type flavor and you can throw them into sautés or salads. I'm getting ready to make another batch of compost tea. That's what this is compost tea brewer. And here's the back side. And here's a view again of the Hugel culture mounds with the cattle panels going over top. So we've got a lot of new plants plugged in that'll be growing here. And look at the lizard hanging out. We've got many lizards throughout the food forest. I find them very entertaining and they're little pest control buddies as well. You can see here we've got a bunch of rattlesnake beans popping up, some calabash gourd over here, different plants like uh, the parsley, mugwort. There's also some Arminian cucumbers coming up on that end. You can see the fava beans common theme throughout the food forest, erupting all throughout the garden. 
on this side we have I believe I put in some lufa gourd also known as Petula and Tagalog on this end so this entire cattle panel trellis is going to be full of vegetables and greenery very soon The Ceanothus here was in full bloom just a couple weeks ago. Absolutely beautiful. There's a couple different Ceanothus in the garden. They attract a lot of bees. The whole bush will just be humming with activity. But the blooms are very, very pretty. And this is the back side. We're entering towards the back side of the chicken run. You can see how we've used the go goji berry bushes to help keep the chickens in the coop if ever we need to keep them in there for the most part. They free roam. They're our pets and they do a great job helping us out in the garden. Down here we've got a garlic patch grown from store-bought garlic. Got a few different garlic patches throughout the garden along with some elephant garlic. Here's some of the elephant garlic growing right in the chicken run. The garden arbor, the main entrance to the garden, is now starting to erupt with new growth. We've got the wisteria here in bloom. Beautiful flower, very fragrant. I guess we'll start over on this end. New addition to the food forest this year, this Asian pear. We've got another Asian pear over there. It's setting quite a few different fruits on there. Here's another new addition, a cherry tree. Over here, we've got some more ashitaba that's perennialized in the garden. This is a compost in place garden bed, little island style garden bed. Variety of things growing. Here's some yacon. Coming back up, another edible tuber. Very delicious, water rich. There's some aloe vera plants that we transferred in here. A red currant. And here we've got a loquat tree. See the fruits on the tree here. Not as large of a fruit set this year. We tend to get the largest fruit set biannual. So every other year we get the largest fruit set. This would be a year where the fruits aren't as abundant, but still. The tree's an evergreen. It's a beautiful addition to the food forest, and we will be getting some fruits off of it this year. Continually moving through the design here, you can see we've got some more artichoke plants. And I wanted to show you guys this had a couple pear trees here and just have been fighting different fungal diseases, fire blight, for years. And I finally ended up removing one of them because it was a two-in-one planting. You can see the stump there. And now this tree recently, again, is starting to develop these fungal issues. So I'm not quite sure if we're going to be leaving this tree in or not. If something just continually performs poorly, we'll replace it with something that's going to do much better. And here we've got a black currant. So now we're getting into the funnest part of the food forest where we get into all the different fruit trees. We've got over 40 different fruit trees now growing back here. This here is a pluot. Originally was a two-in-one planting with a Santa Rosa plum. And we did lose the Santa Rosa plum last year to disease and pest issues. So that was removed. It's just fine. We've got another Santa Rosa plum in the garden as well. And it really opened it up for this pluot here, which we absolutely love. This is one of the most abundant trees we grow. Fruit set is looking very nice. Hundreds and hundreds of fruits throughout the tree. Here we've got an apple tree. We've got a Honeycrisp and a Fuji apple tree. 
There's a second one there. Over here we've got an autumn olive. This is a berry shrub that's also a nitrogen fixing perennial and it goes dormant in the winter. But we did have flowers. We got two different autumn olives in the garden and we were looking forward to a berry harvest this year. Uh, we keep getting flowers but yet to get the berries so we're going to keep trying. Either way it's quite the beautiful plant as it shimmers in the wind and it creates that nitrogen in the ground. Here's a Plueri, a plum cherry hybrid that we plugged in last year. You can see we've got some fruits developing on this very young tree. This was put in as a bare root and then we lopped off the top of the tree at about knee level. And you can see where it's branched out to form a nice canopy. There's three main scaffold branches that make up this tree. That's going to turn into a beautiful fruit producing tree. So here's the other Asian pear. If you look closely, you can see we've got fruit developing all throughout the tree. No sign of disease. Just a very healthy tree. Looking forward to getting some pears soon. Here we've got some more perennial greens and the bees doing their job. This right now is the most abundant fruit tree we have growing. This is the Aprium. Apricot plum hybrid and the fruit set is absolutely amazing on this tree. I skipped doing the thinning that we usually do on the tree. I really just wanted to see how the tree performs, how much of the fruit it's going to drop on its own. But if it gets to a point where the limbs are just becoming too overburdened with the fruit, then I'll be pulling some of that fruit off. But because we did our due diligence and properly pruned this tree over the years, the branches are very strong and they're holding these large clusters of fruit very well. The Aprium tree. Here we've got our weed brew taking place there. We're going to be making some liquid fertilizer. And here's a cherry tree that was kind of plopped in and is probably <laughs> a little bit too close to these other trees. We're we might have to do some rearranging here. As things develop, we do that from time to time. Here's a strawberry guava growing back over here. And there's a lemon guava over here, which hasn't been performing as well as the strawberry, but it is still alive and is starting to push out some new growth. Again, a common theme throughout the food forest. You'll see these hollyhocks growing. This is a spike flower that grows up. The hummingbirds, the bees love it. It's quite beautiful in my opinion and it will self seed readily and create lots of volunteers. I like that because this plant has a very deep tap root which tells me that it's mining up nutrients and minerals from deeper down in the soil so we can use this plant as a chop and drop. Next door to the aprium we got an apricot tree. And we got a nice fruit set going on this tree as well. Spacing is good. For the most part, this tree has been self-balancing. We'll look down towards the base. You can see all these fruits that have dropped are from that apricot. So that's no thinning on part of myself. It just has dropped a bunch of its fruit and it's a little bit sparser than I'd like, but at the same time, we're gonna get plenty of apricots off the tree. Over here you see our grape vines have been pruned and there's many clusters of grapes now developing. These are the flame seedless table grape. There's two different vines growing here. Next to the apricot we've got that second all-in-one almond tree and this tree is loaded with almonds this year. Absolutely amazing. And 
This is the most abundant this tree's ever looked. Back over in the corner here, we've got the passion fruit vine. The passion flowers are stunningly beautiful, have edible qualities. You can see all of these flowers getting ready to pop here and eventually turn into fruit for us. Now the passion vine can be quite invasive and the reason we chose this location, usually with the more invasive plants that may spread, I plant them towards the center of our garden so there's no issue with it maybe going through a fence line. But in this case, this back fence, we've been battling these blackberry shrubs that extend all along this fence. And so it's not a big deal. Uh, it's actually pulled down the fence on that side which is why we've got this cloth here just to help make things look a little bit nicer. But with that, I just figured, hey, might as well go ahead and plant our little invasive plant in the corner as well, since both of them are just gonna battle and not really go anywhere. Down over here, we've got some sugar cane. We need to do some maintenance here, uh, but this overwintered okay. We do need to do some pruning, and there's also some of the other prunings of the plants just laying on top, so we gotta do some cleanup still. There's calendula, calamondin, which is a small little lime-like fruit. And we've got onions throughout. Most of these are Egyptian walking onions. Here we've got another pluary. There's no fruit setting as of yet. We'll keep you updated on that. We did get some good fruits off of it last year. And a white peach. Putting on a very nice fruit set. Just look at that. All the white peaches you can eat. We were very impressed last year with the select amount of fruits that we have. They were very sweet, delicious. These fern like plants growing up are asparagus and we've got several asparagus patches that have been developing back here and we're allowing the fern to continually grow so that the plant can self-seed and also extend its roots underneath the ground. The ferns are the catalyst for the photosynthesis process which helps those roots to expand into the ground to give you a larger patch in the future. Back over here, we've got a two-in-one planting of figs, a blackjack, and a brown turkey fig. And these trees are looking healthy. Here we've got a white nectarine tree. And we've got more fruits on this tree than we've ever had before. We are dealing with a little bit of peach leaf curl. But for the most part, we're seeing very little of this fungal disease throughout our food forest. And we've got a lot of different stone fruits that are susceptible to things like this. So with proper care and maintenance, you can really get the upper hand and have yourself some real winners. But generally speaking, it's not that big of a deal. I like to remove those leaves and also spray my dormant trees with copper fungicide. It's an organic method that just helps to prevent this type of thing. But if you just let the tree be, it's gonna drop most of those leaves and reflush out with some fresh new growth and the tree should be fine. Lots of white nectarines. And next door we've got another peach. This is the Florida King peach. Just loaded with fruit here. Before I take you to the other side, I wanna pan over here and show you the pineapple quince. I really like the pineapple quince tree. The fruits need to be processed before they're consumed, otherwise they're quite hard, but it's just really boiling them down and adding a bit of sugar. And you can create some really delicious desserts out of this fruit, the pineapple quince. Just beautiful, whimsical tree. Adds a nice character to the overall design. So here is the backside of the Florida King peach. And I think I figured out how to keep this tree at a manageable height. And that is 
Don't thin the fruits out too much. And look at the limbs just hanging down with all that fruit. Again, like with the aprium, if I start noticing the limbs becoming too overburdened, I'll come out and remove some of that fruit. But we're doing a bit of experimenting this year and just seeing how the tree handles itself without too much input from ourselves. But the fruit set itself is quite abundant. We're looking forward to the delicious Florida King peaches coming soon. Here we've got a Peter's honey fig. And we will continually get figs off this tree throughout the summer. You can see a few developing now. Absolutely delicious, abundant fig. Tastes like a jelly donut. And here's a view looking back where we just came from. See another cardoon there. We've got a tiger stripe fig that we plugged in last year that's starting to take off. And here we've got some perennial kale, some curly kale almost. Nice variety here that we've left to continually mature. Got another patch of asparagus here. And here's that other Santa Rosa plum I was telling you about. And just a beautiful fruit set developing on this tree. Santa Rosa plum is one of my favorite fruit trees. I've mentioned this in the past. The flavor of the Santa Rosa plum is exquisite. The production of the tree is impressive. And it's very easy to grow. And it's got beautiful structure and bark as well. Over on this side, we've got pomegranate tree. This is the wonderful variety. And soon enough, we'll see this tree loaded with blooms and we look forward to getting another wonderful harvest like we did last year. Here's a fruit tree. I believe this is the candy cane pluary. I'm not 100% if I got that right, but planted this in a couple years ago. By the way, I do document everything I plant on charts, so I don't always memorize it off the top of my head, but I can always go back and look at my chart and see what it was that I planted, where and when. That's nice. You can see it's actually putting off fruits. But what I wanted to mention about this tree was the first year we put it in, I neglected it a bit too much. It dried out for the most part and almost took it out, but we just let it go because I had noticed that there was new growth starting to develop above the graft. So this is all the grafted variety here that's been popping up, but it's got more of a shrub-like appearance. So I'll keep you updated on that, but some nice beautiful fruits developing here. Moving along you can see we've got like another perennial green here with some nice big thick seed pods. This is a nice variety we have back there. So we're letting this one go to seed. We did a lot of chop and drop of some of the perennial greens, the weaker looking greens I would say, and the more abundant varieties that have developed back here we continue to proliferate. This is just a standard purple tree collard and it's using the fence of the chicken run here as a trellis. So we're at the back side here of the chicken run and coop. You can see we've got grapevines crawling up the chicken coop here on both sides. Over there as well. And look at the birds enjoying themselves in the goji bushes. A lot of activity. You can hear those birds out here on this beautiful day. This chicken coop, by the way, was made out of a section of a car canopy. It's very easy to do. You can make yourself a custom tarp. And we made these walls using, again, the cattle panels. And I covered that with some chicken wire. And this has worked out wonderfully for us. Over here we've got an oak tree. This was a volunteer. I believe a squirrel planted this in the ground. And it's right at the fence line. It's not how I would usually plant a tree. But after talking to the neighbors, we agreed to uh, keep it and they were gonna manage their side of the fence. And I'll manage mine. And we'll see how large I wanna let this tree get. I kinda had a vision of keeping it pruned down lower. But we like the oak tree and I look forward to actually harvesting some of the wood off the tree 
for some edible mushroom propagation. Hugo mint pots, right now the lemon balm has come back. We're still looking for the spearmint and the peppermint to come back out. This is another pomegranate here. This is the white variety. Produces a smaller pomegranate and we haven't gotten as large of a harvest off this tree over the years as we have with the wonderful variety. But if you look closely, you can see little, little flowers starting to develop all over the tree here. It's ahead of the wonderful variety. And you can look down and see where we just walked from. That's one of the different walkways, the pathways in the food forest. A lot of the limbs of the fruit trees creeping into the pathway. Eventually, as these trees continually mature, we'll let some of them get larger and we'll keep those overhanging branches up above head level. But for now, this is just fine. It's actually quite fun walking through here. Here's another patch of some elephant garlic. You know, there's comfrey and again, Egyptian walking onion. This is all growing at the base of this white mulberry tree. Little mulberries. All over the tree we'll see if we get to keep any of the harvest this year this is one of those harvest crops that the birds absolutely love and as soon as these berries ripen up if you don't get to them right away the birds will and that's just fine we don't mind sharing with nature here we've got an abundance always plant more than you need and what the wildlife takes will never bother you much here growing up this garden arbor we've got some Japanese honeysuckle. And typically we'll plant other vining crops like pole beans and stuff at the base of these arbors. So here we've got a Valencia orange tree. It's both still holding fruit for us and flowering for next season's crop. And this tree is really starting to take off now. It's looking quite healthy. We got a really great harvest of oranges and continually harvesting oranges from this tree. And here's a view of this pathway. See the chickens enjoying their shelter and shade. See all the fruits dangling off the trees. Here's another one of the ladies over here. And here's the second fajoa or pineapple guava tree that I had mentioned. And just as with the one in the chicken run, we've got a lot of flowering beginning to occur on the tree. Those will be popping soon. Back in here, we've got another Ceanothus that was just loaded with blooms a short time ago and brought in a bunch of the bees. Those bright blue blossoms that develop on this shrub here, which is an evergreen nitrogen fixer are a great way to bring those bees in initially and then once they're here they venture around the rest of the food forest pollinating our fruit trees and some of our other crops here we've got a jujube tree and we've got two jujubes growing in the garden here's the other one and i was absolutely taken back by the flavor of the jujube last year we got some nice harvest going and they were absolutely exquisite i didn't realize i loved jujubes as much as I do, but they were one of my favorite fruits to consume last year. Very sweet, almost caramel-like flavor. And so I allowed these trees to get much larger this year. So I want to increase the harvest. Here we've got a kumquat. And you can see all these new shoots, the trees growing back out. We've still got fruit hanging. Every day I come out here. And I pick a few of these kumquats, get a little dose of vitamin C, you eat the peel of this fruit. Really love it. Then we got some rosemary growing at the base of that pomegranate tree that we just passed by. And here's another autumn olive. 
And underneath the autumn olive, we've got another one of the ladies enjoying her little chicken paradise out here. Here we've got a Washington Naval Orange. Out of the two, I gotta say, I enjoy the Washington Naval the most. They're larger, juicier, slightly sweeter, easier to peel, but uh, the Valencia makes a better juicing orange out of the two. And this tree, again, is just like with the other citrus. It has blooms all over it. We got a really nice harvest off this tree last year. And at the base of this tree, another patch of the fava. Now these fava plants, you can eat the leaves, the tip of the plant, the young pods that it develops. We like to let those pods mature but not dry out. Uh, well, we let them dry out as well for seed stock, but once they're fully mature, we like to harvest those and make a fava bean chili. Here's a volunteer fig. Just so happened to pop up in a pretty appropriate place. So I have no idea what variety it is or how it ended up here, but we do a lot of chop and drop, including fig trees. So there's a good chance that that was just a branch that got covered with some dirt and came back. Here's a hugel we have yet to plant out for this year. We did a bunch of chop and drop, open things up, but you can see so far we plugged in a tomato plant, a basil, there's some oregano that's perennialized on the mound coming back. Some comfrey. Here's some more yacon at the base. There's a cardoon that volunteered and some greens on the backside here. Some merit collards that are in flower at the moment. Another cool perennial green that we left this year. And earlier this year, I also cut this pathway here right through the middle of the hugel culture just to give better flow to the garden design. And so we're back where we started here. So that's what's growing on for spring. I hope you guys enjoyed the tour. This is just the beginning. Our spring tours give you an idea of everything that's starting to grow, the fruit sets that are developing, the plants coming out of dormancy, but there's still a lot more that's gonna happen here over the course of the next few months with the annuals that we plug in throughout the food forest starting to erupt. A lot of the plants just getting going, growing up, the trellis is filling in, the fruit trees having mature, delicious fruits dangling. So you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned for that. We do at least two tours, sometimes three each year to show you guys the updates and the progress. So with that, I wanna thank you all for tuning in today. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that thumbs for us. We always appreciate it. Shoot us a comment below. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. New uploads every week, sometimes every day. We're always giving you updates on everything growing on around here. All right, everybody, take care. We'll be talking to you again soon.